Hey guys, uh, I've been making a couple videos as I've been constructing this bike. wanted to show you a couple things on this one. Um, been working on the battery for a while. I'm kind of wading through the tedium of building a wire harness for this thing. Um, but this thing sure was a pain in the butt to get a hold of. Let me show you a couple things on this. This thing is wild. Essentially, just to give you an idea of the size. All four bricks together, about 27 pounds. Basically this pack, the whole array, assists, uh, consists of four bricks. Each brick has four cells. Each individual cell is a lithium iron phosphate cell. These go all the way down. So this is a big bar. It's almost the size of a brick. That's 20 amp hours worth of uh, battery capacity. It's a pretty large battery. Lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, you're talking about 3.4, 3.5 volts per cell at a full charge. And um, given the fact that every single one of these cells is 20 amp hours, I've just got the whole damn thing is going to be wired in series series connection on batteries you're just adding up the voltage of each cell so that's 16 3.4 3.5 volt cells comes up to about 53 to 55 volts it's sold retail as a 48 volt battery um, each cell has a C rating of 2 C rating essentially allows you to determine the maximum discharge rate of whatever pack you're building you take the C rate of the individual cell you multiply by the total amp hour capacity of the battery I got 20 amp hours on this array times 2 that's a maximum discharge rate of 40 amps that's enough I mean if I flip that into AC it would kill you dead before you hit the floor DC it's pretty safe but it's still a good old amount of power it's a lot of energy um, but let me show you what I'm doing with this thing Um, all together, the thing holds, all four bricks, it's 1.02 kilowatt hours worth of energy. You're talking like a stick of dynamite. This is enough to run like a two-bedroom apartment for like three to four hours, literally. It would run your entire apartment just off this pack. You wouldn't even know the difference. Um, I could probably run... Given 40 amp max discharge, I could run probably three or four apartments for about 30 minutes. Maximum discharge, this thing will drain itself from completely full to empty in 30 minutes flat. That's the maximum it can do. But you got to keep control of these things and you got to keep them in balance. It's real easy to get these packs out of balance so that you might have, you know, five amp hours left in this one while you've got seven in this one and nine in this one. You need to prevent that. Because if any one of these cells drops to zero volts at any time, even if it's fresh off the factory floor, if it drops to zero volts, it will not come back. You can deep cycle these, but you've got to keep them, you know, up about you know two-ish volts, something like that, and then you'll be fine for about 3,000 cycles. Treat these things right; they'll last me about 10 years. In the best case scenario. Anyway, in order to keep my eye on these things, what I'm doing is I'm constructing a pretty sophisticated wiring harness for them. Um, these two bricks here have the wiring harness complete, or at least this half of the wiring harness. Obviously, there's going to be another half that mates with this. But essentially, you've got each individual cell has this circuit board that goes between the positive and negative posts of each cell. This is a battery balancer. I've got one on each cell. And what they do is the green light means that this battery balancer is powered and monitoring the condition of this individual cell. If this cell gains a higher volume of stored electricity than its surrounding cells, a little red light will kick on right here and this uh, balancer will start shedding energy from this cell 
to the surrounding cells. And when you've got one of these balancers on every individual cell, the end result is a BMS or battery management system that'll keep your entire pack in check. Now I want to make sure that these things are working at all times and I want to know when they're trying to balance my battery pack. And obviously there's lights on these balancers but all four of these bricks are going inside a wooden housing that's going to be mounted to my frame. I'm not going to be able to see any of this. So what I've done to monitor things is I've come up here with this this is 22 gauge wire, real thin stuff and I've come up and I've just made a tiny little connection to the positive and negative posts on the power and the balancing lights on each individual circuit board these come together and just run in a strip straight down the center of the battery and then they eventually come down to this 25 pin plug that'll go and mate with the other half of the harness on the dashboard. This allows me to take these LED lights, all eight of them on this pack, and transfer them straight up to the dashboard so I can see what's going on. Likewise, I've got this little bit thicker wire. This is 18 gauge wire here. And I've got this stuff going to each terminal. You can see this one's red. That's the positive terminal terminal of that cell. This is a black wire. That's a negative terminal. You can see they alternate. Red positive, black negative, red positive, black negative. Each terminal has one on there and again the strip comes down the side of the battery. and then all terminates at a 9 pin plug. This will go up and this is going to mate with the harness. These connections will be used as basically voltage taps. This harness is going to go to a bunch of voltmeters that are going to be on the dashboard. So the dashboard will have a readout of the individual voltage off each individual cell if I throw one out. If this one's at 2 volts while these are at 3.2, I'll know it. So I'll know to quit and get this thing on a charger and get everything back under control before it blows up between my legs. And then of course the other thing I've got on here, which are a little hard to see because they're somewhat buried, is I've got the actual bars. This is array A, this is array C, this is B and D. Basically you got array A, B will go here, there's C, there's D. The bike frame will be right in between these two cells, right? There's your seat. Here's your handlebars. Array A, B, C, D. And the readouts on the dashboard will be right above them. So if one cell goes out, I'll physically know which one it is. And as far as these uh, connection bars go, um, maybe, I, maybe I do have them in the wrong order. Yeah, that's array C, so these are backwards. Essentially, the battery, once it's all connected and the harness is done, it's going to be wired up like this. I'm facing where the front of the bike would be right now. Here's your handlebars bike frame goes right in between all the cells okay you've got right there that's your positive connection to the bike 55 volts okay here's your negative for that cell one balance bar comes across connects to cell number two positive negative balance bar connects the next cell connects the next cell this connection is going to come down meet here there will be a bar here here positive to negative positive to negative all series connections essentially what I'm doing is I'm adding up the voltage on each individual cell 
3.4 to 3.5 volts times 16 comes all the way up terminates right here that's my negative lead for the 55 volt boom that would be 55 volts coming across those two terminals right there it's a big horseshoe uh, shaped battery array and it is super tedious getting all that stuff done but we're good we're coming along there is nothing half ass about that anyway a little adult show and tell right <laughs>